In this video, I'm going to reveal a few of the techniques used to composite some of these full CG shots. We're going to focus on one important concept, which is using backlight. Here we have two different spheres and they look similar, but they're not the same. So we have two different kinds of lighting actually going on here. One is a mostly diffused light on a rougher material, and one is a mostly reflective surface by lights that are placed much further away. And now it might not seem like a big difference, but these actually behave really, really different from each other. And it's really important to know the difference. If we look at the light sources here and we actually enable them, here we can see as we rotate around this sphere, we have a light source that's pretty close to the sphere. So as we rotate around, we can see it's lit on the back side. Now, if we go to the other object and we rotate around, there's actually no light source nearby. And we can see that it's not all lit up on the back. So essentially what's actually happening here is that we have lights that are placed much further away. And now it might not seem like a big difference, but the behavior of these two spheres will actually be very different uh, visually. And and you can use this to a strategic advantage using lights that are more specular based on wetter or more reflective materials versus lights where the light source has to be near the object that it's casting onto. There's an interesting characteristic on reflective objects when you're lighting them. If we go up close here, we look at the highlight that's on the top. If we rotate the camera around, you'll notice the highlight moves with the camera. So that's going to be obvious with a reflection. But if you think about this from an art direction perspective, there's a lot of unique things you can actually do with this. So as I rotate the camera, that highlight rotates around the edge as we continue to move. So that's introducing mo movement into your shot without any moving objects. We're already adding a moving element just by adding parallax into the reflections. So this will become really useful in dark scenes where we don't want to put lights and light up everything in a very flat and diffused way, but we still need to introduce light into the scene. So we're going to look at some more examples to explain that concept further. So here we have a mostly reflective material with lights that are placed very, very far away. The way you can think about lights is if it's not a diffuse or rough material, Material, if it's reflective, you can have the light almost infinitely far away and it's still going to reflect, just like a moonlight would on ocean waves. So if we move around here, you can actually see that we're creating shadows and silhouettes by lights that are very, very far away. And if we rotate the camera around, well, it's mostly a dark scene. We're not actually lighting all this area up. So that's a very interesting phenomenon. And once you start to understand the difference, we can start to use this to art direct different characteristics. So here, the same effect with just a little bit of a noise pattern. So one of the ways that film sets will light the scenes in dark scenes is instead of introducing a bunch of lights, sometimes they'll just, if it's like an outdoor scene on a road at night, sometimes they'll just spray down the road with water and that will actually introduce light into the scene without having to put lights closer to the characters. So we can see we're introducing these little things that maybe look like puddles and we could make them better, but the concept still stands that we have some things that are reflecting lights that are much, much further away. The distance to the light is key here because in very dark scenes, we can keep it dark and moody, but introduce those little reflections wherever we want to place them. So to quickly recap, reflected lights can add motion by having parallax in the reflections and we can ping out highlights in dark areas that would otherwise be hard to reach. So if you're wondering how this all relates to these types of shots, I'm going to show you where these techniques are being used on this shot and one of the other shots, and then we'll actually talk about the actual tactic you can use to do some of this in Nuke. So this is not just always doing it in 3D. There's actually ways to think about this and use it as a compositor in Nuke. So either lighting compositing, you can use it both ways here. And this is why compositors have to understand light. So if we look here, I'm going to show you an older version of this comp, one of the earlier versions, and just show you where I was thinking about this concept and how it is useful to enhance CG renders that come onto your plate as a compositor, whether it's in a studio or if you're making your own project. So if I show you this earlier version, there's a few different things going on here. There's some black levels things. There's a various things that uh, have been adjusted. More elements have been added. Uh, etc. But we're going to focus on one of the specific changes, which is more mostly over on this pole. So I didn't like the look of this pole. It's not that highly detailed. Uh, some of these assets are meant to be seen at medium distance and such. So it wasn't holding up here. And, you know, we also have a, a light indicator here that can give us a little bit of a hint of information about the real footage we shot. So on this barrel, we have a bit of a highlight. So I know there's a, a light behind the camera somewhere, and maybe that could help us out with this metallic pole. That doesn't look very metallic as well. I know I can't just light it up here. If I light it up with a diffuse light, 
it's not going to match the guy anymore because there's not a lot of diffuse light on him. Understanding the little technique we taught about reflective lights and how they could be infinitely far away, if we just pull out some of the detail here, either using maybe the albedo pass or some other rendered pass, uh, that we can pull out some tiny little shapes essentially then we can enhance the look of this so if i look if compare it before and after here's before and here's after when we start to just pull out a little bit of detail in the same reflection color here we have this highlight and then we have these little highlights that are being pulled out uh, as well and also i pulled out some of the highlights just here just to enhance the look and make this look a bit more rusted and maybe there's some different pieces of uh, maybe so the rust is a little bit less reflective and there's more of a reflective material underneath so you see uh, these are small changes but when you add up the small changes uh, especially on the edges it starts to make things look much more real and so the same thing on the railings um, you know this feels a little bit dark it feels a little bit cg uh, same here, you know, uh, this could be technically fine. There's not a lot of light coming down on him from the top. So what can we do? Well, we could add, you know, this is not a very reflective surface, the coat, so we can still justify some reflective light that's not going to affect the character, but will still feel physically based and integrated. So we can add those little highlights on top of the railing uh, over here as well. And that just starts to make everything sit together a lot better. So that's the final shot. And there's still things that could be adjusted here and little things, but um, you know, another area that's interesting, uh, I'll show maybe the, the actual comp of this. Sometimes I'll actually paint these highlights where they don't exist just to, so your brain can understand and read what it is that you're looking at. So in these background pipes, uh, some of that light on the railing is just literally a roto paint and just kind of a broken up noise cutting up the roto paint. And that will help your brain understand what it is that's back there, especially with out of focus shots, this can really help. Uh, another area where this is actually happening is here with the orange lights. So we have this character getting a very uh, bright orange highlight on the coat here. And essentially, this barrel back here was actually much darker in the render. But I wanted to connect these three different points to feel like we have one light source coming and hitting the same direction here. So if I just take a roto paint, so we have all this orange light hitting on here, and then we have this metallic highlight hitting here, and then we have this hitting here. So we have all of these indicators saying that the light is coming from down here. And like I said, this was much darker and it just felt like this was a really, really bright thing against something that was, I mean, this thing was almost pitch black. So what I did is I took the indirect bounce light of this specific object with a crypto mat and just boosted the heck out of it so that we have this and this and this. And that's what's making it feel connected. We have to have those connection points in multiple areas. Otherwise, it won't feel like it's lit together. So that's a lot of the things that compositors do, these tiny changes. But we make hundreds of them. And that's what will bring the image together. So here we have the same concepts being applied. We have a very dark scene. But the majority of the light here is actually reflected light. So if you look at the railing, most of this lighting, uh, I'll show you again after. I'm going to open the scripts just after this explanation. But most of this detail was actually done in comp. It was not done in render. So we can enhance those things, but we have to first know the principle. If you don't know the principle, you can show a relight tool on YouTube. You can do whatever, but it doesn't help really if you don't understand the concepts underneath. So that's really what I'm trying to teach here. So again, we have these highlights that uh, we can read on top of some objects. Everything's out of focus in the background, but we still are understanding light direction because there's these various white highlights all around the top. And we actually have this on the character as well. So we shot the plate. Uh, essentially, I put a, uh, a bluish kind of bluish white light above the green screen and a few feet away from the actor. And essentially, that's literally just for the highlights and the motion on the helmet. If I didn't have those that single light, even though it's not doing much on the front of the character, that's actually doing quite a lot for the integration because you have to feel the light direction, otherwise it doesn't work. So those are the kind of small details that add up and you can see how uh, it's really, really useful. So in terms of this actually being applied here, if we just go to the railing layer and I show this, um, I'm basically using this node, P Noise Advanced, you can find it on Nukipedia or you can watch the tutorials on this channel. I have a few about this technique already. So we're just using a P Noise that's running over the position pass and you can mask this to where you want. So you can use a crypto mat and you can mask it out, etc. So if you want it in just one area or not, and sometimes I'll do multiple layers of this. So here I'm just masking it by the highlights. So I'm actually keying something that was already there. There was some detail and I'm kind of keying 
the broader highlight region and masking this new noise pattern into that region. And I'm using that to essentially just boost those areas and get a little bit more breakup in the sort of mid to highlight range area. And like I said, uh, with the other shots and uh, maybe with this shot, um, sometimes I'll do multiple layers of these noise patterns. So I'll do like a dark one to add like dirt and I'll do like a mid-tone one. And sometimes I'll add a highlight one and then the pings within the highlights. So you can add smaller highlights in the highlight regions. So you, again, I taught some of those techniques in Nuke 404, which is in the beginner series. I talk about how I thought about highlights, how I think about uh, pinging out different materials. So if you haven't heard those concepts before, definitely check out those courses because it goes really in detail on, on at least my methodology for approaching these things. Now, the other portion where I'm doing something kind of similar is a little bit of relighting where I just wanted to ping out the different angles. Again, I'm thinking about distant lights. Most of these surfaces are metallic, so this, this principle could totally apply. Uh, you can really just think about it like wherever you need some little highlights, it's a good way to justify it. And a lot of times this can help renders a lot by just doing this. So uh, here I'm shuffling out the normals. I'm using a node called Rotate Normals, which you can grab again on Nukipedia. Essentially, you just look at the red, green, or blue channel, and you find one of the channels, uh, and you just basically rotate these numbers around until you have an alpha that is from the angle that you're looking for. What I'm trying to do is add highlights on the top of a bunch of these faces, so I rotated this around until in the green channel, it showed basically the faces being lit from the top. And then I shuffle the green channel into the alpha so we can use it for color grading. So that's a little bit more intermediate advanced. If you're not doing, uh, you know, if you don't know the shuffle node yet and those kind of things, go find those tutorials on the channel. There's a bunch uh, about that. Essentially, uh, then we just use the alpha that we created to boost those highlights. So if I disable and enable, uh, we can see all those little highlights being boosted everywhere on the on the on the, the uh, top facing surfaces, and that's really going to help, especially on an out of focus shot where uh, we're going to read those highlights even more. So if we look at the out of focus shot, we're going to see some of those highlights being pinged out at various places here. So. Uh, that's about it for this tutorial, guys. If you like it, make sure to hit like on this video. Tell me what you thought. 